guys, today I am going to be talking about what you should know before you get a bearded dragon. So this is Mango, he is my baby, my bearded dragon. Um, there are many things that I wish I knew before I got him. I have absolutely no regrets. Mango is my child. He is amazing and perfect and I love him in every way. He's so cute. Um, but I feel like I'm just going to make this video to tell you guys a little bit about what you should expect before you get your bearded dragon and what you should know in advance. And if you're on the fence of getting one, keep watching because I'm going to tell you all the goods and bads and ups and downs of these beautiful reptiles. So first of all, I'm going to start with the bad. Um, not bad, but just, you know, cautions that people should have um, before they get them. Number one is, I'm not going to rank these. Okay, first of all, you're going to be dealing with bugs. I have, you know, I have hornworms sitting on my desk in this little container that Mango adores hornworms. Um, I have superworms, crickets, roaches, all of it just in my house, and I touch them with my fingers. You're going to have to deal with them, and if you are deathly afraid of bugs and you just refuse to deal with them, you probably shouldn't get a bearded dragon. Um, most reptiles eat bugs, and if you are really going to have a problem with touching and handling the bugs and you're going to end up just having to get rid of the lizard, don't get one <laughs> because you're going to have to deal with the bugs. Honestly, that being said, you get used to it. You know, I never saw myself touching a roach, and I'll just grab them out of their bucket now and just feed them the mango because, you know, it's my baby, and I'm providing substance for him, and, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to feed your child, <laughs> to feed your children. <laughs> he just jumped on my hands. He's like, don't kiss me, mommy. Not in front of everyone. Stop, baby. What's wrong? Um... Next thing you should know is they are known as being the easiest reptile to take care of, but that does not mean that they are easy animals to take care of. Bearded dragons are sturdy reptiles, you know, they're an amazing starter pet, I will say that if you're looking to get into the reptile world, but it's not like owning a cat or dog, you know, they require a lot of special conditions. Um, they can be finicky, you know, sometimes there's just going to be something wrong with them and you have to get to the vet. You know, it's a lot of work taking care of them and so when people call them the easiest reptiles to take care of, I guess that's true, but that does not mean that they are easy pets to take care of. You know, they require a lot of work and love and bonding is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, you are not going to instantly, as soon as you get your bearded dragon, have a bearded dragon that you see on YouTube or, you know, Facebook or Instagram or wherever you're looking. They're not going to instantly love you. You know, Mango never would have let me hold him like this when he was a baby. He'd be like, don't touch me. Who are you? You're a giant creature that's going to eat me. Like, that's what they think when they're babies and when they don't know you. So you really need to um, do a lot of bonding techniques with them. I'll make a whole video on that, but basically what I did was hand feed him, pet him, show him that I'm not going to hurt him. I'm providing him with, you know, everything he needs to live, comfort, happiness, all of it. And now he's fine. He loves me. Don't you? <laughs> so just keep that in mind that you're going to have to work to earn their trust. And I think a lot of trust is earned through mutual respect. I think that if they don't want to be handled, sometimes you just need to respect them. Respect that they are a living creature and that they have their own personalities and likes and dislikes. And you know what? Sometimes you might just have a grumpy bearded dragon and that's how it is. Sometimes you'll have a friendly one. Like most, I think most bearded dragons are very friendly. But you know, there are, I've seen them mean bearded dragons and <clears throat> you just need to be able to handle that. So the next thing I want to talk about is their setup. So you are going to need a few things for bearded dragons. You know, it's not like you're going to keep them in your house running around. They need a UVB bulb, a heat bulb, a, heat, a light fixture, somewhere to bask, um, something to put on the bottom of their tank, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, decorations, 
everybody wants decorations. I have a backdrop because that reduces their stress a little, like, something to make it look like they're not just in a glass cage in your room, you know, you put like, mine is like a picture with different like, succulents and cactuses and stuff. You put that there, you put that there, it's for different happiness, for different stress, and I, think stress. I think it works, I think Mango likes it. Sometimes he thinks it's real and he tries to jump into it, so. <laughs> um, the next thing I want to talk about is, what should you put in the bottom of your tank? I, I think you know where this is going. Don't put sand in the bottom of your tank, especially if you have a baby. I I don't even like it for adults. I'm one of those people who just is completely against sand in Breed of Dragons cages. And I know people's number one argument is it's like that in the wild. Um, also, they say, oh, my Breed of Dragon has sand. Everything's fine. Everything is fine for now, but I can promise you that in the future you're going to have a problem with impaction and infections and so many different things are going to go wrong and if you just want to save yourself a trip to the vet and you know save yourself the heartbreak of your beard dragon getting sick or damaged or anything just use reptile carpet i use reptile carpet and i adore it i love reptile carpet i am so happy that's what i use for mango's cage because i just i am so happy with it so that's my recommendation is reptile carpet um you're also going to have to dust their food in calcium and multivitamins so I use um, Herptivite multivitamins two days a week and just, I don't remember what brand it is, calcium dust five days a week. So it's extremely important to do that and it helps your bear dragon's health so much. They have so much substance that they need and they really need your help with dusting and giving them the proper accommodations to give them the healthy life that they need. Also, I want to talk about the veggies that they should eat because, hey guys, <laughs> they need a diet of vegetables and bugs. So, you're so cute. You want to sit on my shoulder? So, they need a diet of vegetables and bugs. Um, the veggies that you are going to feed them, there are so many resources online where you can look and just say, is this safe to feed my bearded dragon? And they will say yes or no, or I'm not sure, don't try it. So the number one thing that I always see people asking on um, Google is avocados. And avocados are actually poisonous to most reptiles, and they are very poisonous to bearded dragons. So if you ever get the need to feed your bearded dragon guacamole for some reason, or you just been given avocado, don't do it. <laughs> um, what I usually feed Mango is kale is like his um, his staple vegetable that I give him. And I'll mix it up every once in a while. You want to watch vitamin A toxicity with bearded dragons because they have trouble with that. So if you're trying to feed them fruits or vegetables that are very high in vitamin A, you might not want to do that because it could have some damaging effects on their health such as, what is it, like broccoli, carrots maybe, something like different foods with high vitamin A count you want to watch and not feed to them every day. You can do it as a snack every once in a while, but not every day. I I think most of Mango's veggies are kale, um, alfalfa. That's kind of a weird vegetable, but I do feed it to him because he likes it. It's I had never heard of it before I started researching it online for bearded dragons. It is this like stringy vegetable that kind of looks like worms which is why I feed it to mango and it's pretty good for him actually so if you are looking for veggies there is a lot of fun you can have with that you can make them a really pretty salad you know they have a pretty wide variety of veggies that they can eat you know they're omnivores they they just eat whatever they can get their hands on if you let them um some advice that I have is if you are having trouble feeding your bearded dragon veggies Feed him the veggies first thing in the morning when he's really hungry. That's what I always do with mango and... Okay, there's a bunch of geese outside my window, like, screaming right now. I'll shut it. <laughs> so, um, feed them their veggies first thing in the morning. And I have a lot of success with feeding mango veggies when he first wakes up. You know, after lights on for an hour, I would say. Probably about an hour after he wakes up. 
um, I'll feed him some kale or whatever other vegetables I'm feeding him, and then I'll go to bugs after that. But you really, like, veggies are very important to their health. And also, do not feed them iceberg or, like, romaine or any of that really crispy, like, big lettuce because you will actually cause your beta dragon to starve to death if that's all you're feeding them because it has an extremely low nutritional value. It, um, I'm sure you've got you guys have heard this before, but it has a very low nutritional value. It's mostly water, and it actually costs their bodies more energy to digest it than it gives them. So it's really, like, not a big, you know, point to it. It provides them with uh, hydration, I guess, but other than that, it's pretty useless. <laughs> um, so, also some bugs that I feed my beta dragon are... As a staple, I usually just stick to crickets and roaches, dubia roaches. Um, I've been trying my hand at breeding them lately, so that's fun. <laughs> uh, I made a video on that. <laughs> I don't know how it's working out. <laughs> so crickets and roaches are my staples. I feed them superworms um, every once in a while. And then calcium worms also sometimes is a staple, but they're you know, phoenix worms, calcium worms. There's a lot of different names for them, but I feed him that. But I think that can be fed as a stable because they're high in calcium, but they are a bit hard for me to get my hands on. Um, so, you know, Mango gets them every once in a while. I ju actually just ran out a couple days ago. Um, so we're back to crickets and roaches. <laughs> um, hornworms, I just showed you guys those. That's a treat. Hornworms, waxworms, and mealworms. Sometimes I just would just say stay away from mealworms, but every once in a while it's okay. Hornworms, waxworms, mealworms, they are treats. Eat them as if you would eat candy and you'll be fine. So, um, that's about all I have to say about the bugs and food, and I think we covered everything, didn't we, Mango? So, thank you guys for watching, and give me a subscribe and a thumbs up if you enjoyed and you liked hearing my advice about you know, your first time buying a bearded dragon, and I hope that I didn't scare you away from it because they are extremely, extremely rewarding animals to take care of with the most amazing personality you can imagine. They really have unique, awesome personalities, and I haven't had a day where Mango has not made me laugh. Like, he makes me laugh and smile every day, and he's just a really big source of happiness in my life and I love him so much and if you're willing to put in the research and time and work into owning a bearded dragon I can promise you that you will enjoy yourself and love it and they are worth every second of work and every dime spent on them because they are precious precious animals and I love him <laughs> anyway thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you next time